Africa is one of the richest continents in the world. Just example, for Africa has been ongoing, uh, has been an ongoing phenomenon. However, the intensity of the present scramble has increased multifold. The scramble involves growing lease of outside powers. The lease is led by China, the United States, France, and Russia. All are seeking business opportunities on the continent and equally positioned to drive most human population growth over the rest of uh, this century or more inside just Lee are aiming to counter the influence of a global or regional rival. Russia now presents itself as a nemesis of the West. How can Africa take advantage of the new scramble or as well avert it? Stay with us. This is a Pan-African debate on your Pan-African television or fake media. Hello, thanks for joining us this day. It's a Pan African television. This is Afric Media. We are running off uh, the year with this last edition of uh, the Pan African debate. And this uh, day, uh, we want to welcome you and equally thank those of you who have been there all through the year. We today are taking a stock uh, briefly on 2022 and we equally will be discussing the new scramble uh, for Africa, France, Russia. China and lots more are eyeing Africa's resources. The big question is how can Africa avert this new scramble or better still, how can the continent take advantage of uh, this new scramble? That's our topic of discussion for the day. You can follow us live on our Facebook page. Leave us your comments. We shall have them read right here during uh, the program. And joining us uh, this day to discuss uh, how Africa can avert or take advantage of the new scramble over the continent, we have uh, Mr. Ndium. Emmanuel, he's a civil society advocate. Thanks for accepting our invitation. Thank you very much, uh, Ben Lewis. It's been a while. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I'm glad to think that if there is one of the most outstanding achievements that we should be talking about this afternoon should be the fact that we are still existing. Exactly. That the year has been good enough to yeah. preserve us and that we still have life in us is something we must thank the gods of Africa. Okay. And of course, as we are thanking the gods of Africa, I want to take this opportunity to greet the management of uh, African Media, mm -hmm. that uh, you guys have been doing a great job. And how I wish the great job was going to extend to 2023 mm -hmm. and even multiply. It's just a wish by nature has for you people. What do you people wish for yourselves? And the best wishes is all we we all wish for, and uh, equally wishing those of you who've been accompanying us to look into issues and events affecting the continent, and we equally appreciate you all for always uh, being there. Thank you very much. And we equally have Mr. Fire Evis, he's a journalist and political analyst. Mr. Fire Evis, uh, thanks for accepting to be part of the last edition of uh, Pan African TV, <laughs> the Kangaroo Man. Yes, I think um, I'm very happy being here today. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have been missing in action for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, because I said, let me give a pause and look at the modus operandi of the funny head of state we have. And the enslavement of the people they pretend to govern and link them to the colonial masters in another scramble for Africa. Um, when I stood for a while, I realized that these head of states are not serious human beings, accompanied by the toothless bulldog of the African Union. I decided to make a comeback on the platform, which will be another dimension. Greetings to the people of Gunoko Village, as usual, His Royal Majesty Dr. Fomiki Walters. To the good friends who are watching us right away from Tuambing, Gabunam, Gabunge, Jinebai, and all the like, and all the areas of Bingu Central. Mm -hmm. But you know, I always have my second village, the people of Baba Awan, and His Royal Majesty, as well as the people of Bafanji, and the Royal Majesty of Bafanji. But then, I would tell you that, uh, Luis, all has not been well. We need a new generation of leaders, because these ones have already expired. All of them have expired. That is why in the new phenomenon of kangarooism, all these leaders who decide to mortgage the future of Africa by letting single countries con dictate and invite a whole continent, may the ancestors of this African continent forgive 
these kind of leaders because I don't understand how Russia Africa summit, Japan Africa summit, France Africa summit, hey, America Africa summit, and we take our bags, take whole entourage of embezzlers who have nothing to offer on state budget. We fly them to go and sit in hotels, sleep, eat good food. When people are back here suffering, they will meet us here by the time is up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fivis, and uh, we shall have time to discuss more on the highlights of uh, at this topic. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Elijah Enwoku, you are a researcher with uh, Leeds University on Africa Development. You join us by Zoom. Uh, it's a pleasure having you on this last edition of the Pan African Debate for the year 2020. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lewis, and thank you to. <laughs> I, <was> just... <laughs> I was just smiling at uh, the kangaroo man. <laughs> um, it's a pleasure. It's been a roller coaster year. Uh, there's been so much that has happened in Africa and all over the world. And um, I was talking to somebody on the other platform that uh, it would take us two days, three days, even a week to discuss what has happened in Africa. But um, on a positive note, I think um, <clears throat> there might be things that are happening in Africa that we can talk about and see if we can inject some solution-focused strategies. But I know today you want to talk about the scramble for Africa. So yeah, um, I greet my televiewers from Uganda. Uh, surprisingly, I never knew that uh, they're watching us from Uganda, as I mentioned to you some time ago, Luis. And, uh, I get emails from people from Uganda, Cote d'Ivoire, all over, and saying, oh, we saw this, we saw that. So welcome to all our televiewers, and I hope that we're going to have a fruitful discussion this afternoon about the way forward for Africa. So thanks for having me. Accepting to be part of the program. And uh, we're going to discuss more that has to do with uh, Africa, but just, uh, it's been a year full of several events and it seems we're closing the year with uh, the passing of uh, the emeritus uh, Pope Benedict uh, he died uh, earlier today and it is at uh, page of course but then when you look at what has happened around the world and Af Africa uh, most precisely let's begin with you what maybe took your attention what were you more concerned about or what were some of the highlights that you know you had took interest in, in the year 2022. 2022, I took interest in the domain of sports to start with. Yeah. To think that an African country for the first time got the white boys well beaten and saw their way right to the semi finals. Mm -hmm. I think quarter finals. Yeah, quarter finals. Yeah. No, no, the semi-finals, semi-finals. Morocco ended at the semi-final level. That's why they had to play for the third uh, position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that was one of the major <coughs> high points of the 2022 that really made my, my, my year mm -hmm. a joyful one. And uh, economically, to think that in 2022, of course, in the 21st century, that Africa has to always extend a hand of borrowing. Not even borrowing to make use of it. Borrowing to enrich some criminals, we call them leaders in Africa, is something I think every son and daughter of Africa should rise up against it. You see, they give us names, heavily indebted uh, countries, poor countries. Uh, but I think heavily indebted is a wrong word. As we are facing out of 2022, the new word for the African countries that have chosen to remain to die in debt should be poorly indebted countries. Because there's a difference between being heavily indebted when you factor the, 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 what you have borrowed into good use and the person who borrows it to come and embezzle. Again, it was disgusting to see that Joe Biden, president of a country, invites a group of African presidents. That is a country inviting a continent. I know we'll be touching 
when we come to the to the mm. new scramble mm -hmm. because this scramble has taken a different face so i was actually ashamed that one single president convokes a continent and you saw most of them who went there who could barely walk some of them could barely recognize where they were their memories were already failing them and they did not know which audience they were going to address it's a shame to the image of africa but notwithstanding it is also the first time in history where africa stood up tall to fight against the colonizers even though at the end of it all if you do a thorough and clinical examination you will discover that africa is still losing because to have stood up there we want to fight a colonial master whereas we don't manufacture ammo cars <coughs> ak-47s and all what not keeps them smiling because we have to go back to them to get to incur new debts those debts that we are incurring from them we have to give it back to them in the exchange of these ammo cars and all or not. So the instabilities in Africa is something one cannot actually say that 2022 was a glorious one, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Now, before uh, I get to the panelists, you just made mention of the fact that uh, we are giving, we take debt, we take loans and all the rest. Now, do we blame those who give out these loans or we blame uh, those who take this loan? Because uh, in most countries, these loans are forced on, uh, on the countries which many have termed to call it a, a, a debt trap, using it as a trap to, you know, hold Well, down. Uh, Mr. Luis, I wouldn't really subscribe to that uh, statement completely because you recently saw Nana Akufo going back to IMF. Yeah, and that's somebody With, who has resisted. Yeah, who has resisted. Go. Yeah. There, somebody can be tempted to believe you. But when you look at other countries in Africa, take the case of Cameroon and child those loans at times are not forced on them because we have leaders whose ultimate goal of being in power is to die in power then you discover that the worst part of it is people incur debts because they want to boot the economy of their countries mm -hmm. but it becomes worrisome when you take a debt, go, go to Africa. I'm not the one saying it. It will shock you that in a country like Cameroon, a relative high part of Cameroon's budget is meant there for the security of one person in this country. How then does those debts serve you and I as Cameroonians? That's what we call poorly indebted countries and Cameroon is one of the poorly indebted countries because let me come back to your question if those loans are forced on you do the people also come and force you to embezzle them do the people also come and force you not to tar root your country have you ever heard that a county gave loans and say look as I'm giving you these loans don't supply electricity don't supply water it is true that in some countries those loans are being forced on them mm -hmm. so that they can have a grip over them and maintain them in bondage. But you who conceive those, those loans, mm -hmm. you conceive them because the population has given you legitimacy to be there or legality to be there. Because most of these <coughs> criminals you call African president, most of them are there by legality, not by legitimacy. Now, if by virtue of chance you have that opportunity to be there, what stops you from satisfying your people with the debt? Mm -hmm. Because I'll be happy to pay taxes knowing that if I leave Douala today and I'm going to Njamena, I'll have good roots. Mm -hmm. I'll, I know that if I'm going to Ekok, I have good roots. If I'm going to my homeland, Bamenda, I'll have good roots. Now, we have a system where there are people put in place, they vote budget every day, but the budget ends within leaves and bounds. It ends on writing. Okay. Yet, that budget is 
quietly resting in the accounts of a few privileged people at the detriment of the 90 percent of the population that's why i'm telling you that mm. africa needs to retain okay. african leaders plus what i was telling your colleague yesterday in this studio civic education needs to take the center stage in our educational system today okay. because that is what have clouded the lack of civility civic education in our african citizens has clouded their minds in such a way that they don't even know how to question their leader mm -hmm. on a sister platform i just shared a while ago with uh, elijah enoko i was telling a, 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 a colleague a cbdm colleague who is shouting that african president needs to be whole to accountability and when i asked him the question you are god who is in yaoundé you people do not want that we should hold them to account immediately you start holding them to account you are anti-government you are this you are that so i think it's actually time for the african population to learn their lessons mm. as they are learning their, their lessons let the leaders know and take from the example of uh, benedict the 16 who just passed on to to eternity mm. to know that when it is no longer going you step down okay that is what they call honor and leadership all right just like you mentioned in uh, civic education being taken into consideration many of them the word civic education into patriotism <laughs> and now it's, it's it's about patriotism and not about yes civic education. and their patriotism yes. please before you give him the microphone and the worst part of this patriotism you are talking about is that their patriotism in most african countries and especially my country means loving and supporting a particular individual mm. not loving your land mm. because if you love your father land you will not buy way. you will not buy ammo cars to be killing your own citizen mm. oh. if you love your father land you will not tell a lie against your own country oh. people will not be dying and you say that people are not dying so okay. that patriotism in the real context and in the definition of the marcus gaves the kwame krumas and the perad abbas and the rest was love for father land mm. And it is because of love for fatherland that a military man takes an oath to die protecting that fatherland. Not that you take Protect an oath an to die protecting an individual. All right, Mr. Jim Mane, thank you very much. Uh, let's get to you, Mr. Faevis, journalist and uh, political analyst. Mr. Faevis, we're coming to the close of the year 2022 in a few hours from now. When you watch, take a look back in the year 2022. What are some of the highlights that you think it's worth mentioning here highlights you see <laughs> okay um i think yaoundé should be watching us very well and those who are at a 2d those who are in bangi those who are in aso rock in nigeria should listen and listen very well if i tell you that things that marked 2022 were on a good footing i will be lying even the football jamboree, which most of the African leaders use as an opium to deceive Africans to be happy and jubilating while they keep swindling the budget of the people and ruled with iron fist, things did not go well for 2023. I am coming, I was of recent, you know, you more greetings to the people there and also in Kufutu, that is a Fungum subdivision. And in the course of going through, I passed through two different checkpoints, both manned by the military and the Amber Boys. I want to thank them first because they were all civil <coughs> inclined, because they, could, they checked my ID and discovered that I was just a harmless journalist on the part of the security forces and on the part of the Amber Boys. But what was catching was that all of them were holding sophisticated weapons, AK-47s and the rest. And I asked myself, these AK-47s are not fabricated on the African continent. The only arms manufacturing co company on the African continent is in Sudan. There is none. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, all those that move into the war-torn areas are not from the African continent. ISIS, uh, uh, Al-Shabaab, Njanjawi yeah. militiamen, the others in DRC crossing to Rwanda and all the line. But I will tell you that 
The bad thing in 2022 is that some African countries told a lie. One, they held a meeting sometime in Ivory Coast and said, guns will cease in 2022, and they gave a date. They are all rascals. Silencing the guns. Silencing the guns. Well, since 2020. Yeah. Since 2020. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and when I spoke to one of them, a foreign minister in one of the West African countries, he told me, we are cocksure. 2021, I asked him, he said, no, things are in progress. 2022, he told me, before the end of 2022, they will meet that target. Until today, the guns are still smoking. You see the bunch of rascals we have? And that is why people think that we will continue to dance to their whims and caprices. I will tell you, Mr. Lewis, that um, a handful of things pretending to be democratic principles are on the African continent. Amongst those that were very disturbing for 2022 is the fact that the precarious conditions of Africans has been dropping, dwindling, and increasing. If we tell you the number of persons who died in the Mediterranean, I tell you the number of women, girls who were taken as sex slaves in the days that in Libya, across, going across to Italy, you ask yourself, are we on a good footing? And no African leaders ask, why are a handful of Africans rushing out of the continent? If you move to the Bangui airport, the Simaleng International Airport, Douala International Airport, you go to Lagos, Abuja, you see the number of Africans leaving. You will think that they are going for a birthday party next door country to come back the next day. If you move over to Mexico, which I've done a whole investigation on it, and around the Mexico border before getting to America, we have more than 82,000 African migrants trapped in the forest over there. With over 2,800 deaths recorded in 2022. Because they could not survive the harsh conditions. Some of them died along the desert. Others could not swim in the, in the rough, rugged mountains. And where are they going to? For greener pastures. What happens in their own homeland? The leaders have made the homeland hell for them. There's no way we can be celebrating 2022. I mean, no reason. And I tell you that if you go to the American philosophy, when you touch a single American wrist, you touch the entire American soil. On the African country, it's the other way around. That some Africans are molested in Saudi Arabia, where racism is at its peak, Dubai, and the host countries stay mute. Even the consulate in those countries and the ambassadors are mute. These are devils in disguise. And that within the African continent, you move to next door country and you are treated, humiliated because you are not from that country. And the countries that have these citizens being molested stay mute. Maybe they are looking at bigger economic advantage. They are devils in disguise. You can't tell me a camera is molested in another country and the consulates in that area stay mute and are looking for ways to embezzle money and sign shady deals with the West because they are offered villas and streets in Europe. These are devils. And so, 2022 has been a very bad one because ghastly boat accidents characterize the African continent. Ministers of Transport have not resigned. And they sit at the blue grammar every day let me shock you, Luis. Between Boya and Douala in Cameroon, ministers, listen very well. When I tell this people mean bad for the people of Cameroon, you think that I'm joking. The same thing in Zimbabwe. The same thing in Malawi. If you come to Cameroon, as I tell you, they will pretend that they are doing road construction. And they will dig holes that they want to and re, uh, reconstruct or what they, they want to amend the roads or the broken parts until an accident occurs and somebody dies before they come to undo the adjustment or fill the pothole. These are blood sucking elements. I am telling a story of recent in Boya, Douala, where a ghastly motor accident claimed two lives around 4 p.m. and by 8 p.m. they came and filled the pothole. They were the ones who created the pothole because they said they wanted to uh, compact it well. And so they left it for over two months. An accident occurred at four. They filled it at 8 p.m. in the night. You see why I say they are all vampires? And nobody is saying anything. 
and uh, now you take a look mr list a heap of debt which uh, was on, on fire on fire and uh, it supported that dozens died equally on that area so before they came to clear it off mm. and you are on the african continent where epileptic power flow is on the rise here we have natural areas where electricity can be tapped we have schools polytechnic here and there they said they are studying electricity we have professors of physics who are professors of no perfect portfolio because a professor in physics cannot adapt a system of electricity a school of technology sleeps every day and people even in Dwara sleep in darkness in harare part of it you have lights uh 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 containment or light goes off for about a week two weeks three weeks and nobody's saying anything water supply gets cut in urban areas people drink dirty water get diarrhea and no minister is resigning this is the kind of african continent we are talking about that until all these kangaroo leaders and kangaroo ministers quit the scene we will continue to wallow but this as i end the youths have caused this problem because they use them to carry all these dirty deals i was surprised that when an african leader disgraced cameroon in washington <laughs> few days after some hoodlums in Kongsamba, youth who have no job jobless youths went to the street and they were shouting even in bafang bangate rada that we want the leader to stay on forever and ever after a disgrace and then given the fact that we have new generation youth who could take over they use youths because of one thousand francs and two three bottles of beer to sell their conscience to the devil i have said if i meet a youth on the street chanting those slogans i give you a dirty slap because you are the witch in broad daylight wizards in broad daylight who are causing us this havoc where we are the time for action is now thank you right uh, thank you very much mr five is Let's talk with you via Zoom, uh, Mr. Elijah Inoku, your researcher with Leeds University on Africa Development. 2022 has been a year full of several events and uh, happenings. Mr. Elijah, what uh, caught your attention in 2022? What can you say about the year which is uh, coming to a close? It's been a dramatic year for Africa and the world at large. It's not just Africa. It's to be very honest, it's been a dramatic year for the world. We've seen COVID-19 that spilled over to 2021, 2022. We've seen the rise of war in Africa. We've seen um, the pandemic wreak havoc in the African economy. But I would say on a whole, you know, from a negative perspective, we can talk about it for a very long time about the impact of wars on the African continent. It's not a positive result. Wars are never a positive result. But we see the proliferation of wars on the African continent that has drawn the continent backward. As we're speaking, um, I got an, a notification on my phone that on average in Africa, African countries are on an average between 46 to 56 in terms of 56 percent of debt to gdp gdp ratio that's to say for every 1000 francs i want to give that an example of france for every 1000 francs that an african country takes in terms of taxes and revenue or whatnot they spend 460 francs to service the debt i don't mean to pay the loan the interest that they are paying on the debt servicing the debt alone 46 percent that is not a sustainable model for any country in terms of development. So it is something that the African country needs to take back. Somebody talked about the, um, the, the, the decision or the goal by the African country, continent to, uh, to, be, to stop guns or whatever they call it, whatever slogan, silencing the guns, that's what they call it. But until this become a primordial preoccupation of African countries, we are going to be on this platform in years to come to talk about what is wrong with africa because uh, uh, uh mr lewis in addition to this you know 46 percent to 55 percent 
uh, debt to GDP ratio on the African continent, we also have war. And we have budgets. Most of the budgets that we see in Africa are war budgets. If you have 50% of your budget buying military equipment to, to fight a war, 50% is left. What can you do with 50% of your budget in terms of development, in terms of economic plan, in terms of education, in terms of food security and all that? You can't do much. You can barely lead. The people can barely lead. So until the African continent start targeting the root cause of some of their problems, we will be here next 20 years to talk about what is going wrong in Africa. You know, as a whole, Africa need to put their perspective and understand what do they want to achieve? What do, where are they going? As long as that is not the goal, as long as they start balancing between war and this and that and whitewashing issues, we will be here. It doesn't take much. I say this with a heavy heart. It doesn't take much to stop the war in Cameroon. It doesn't take much to stop the war in Ethiopia. It doesn't take much. You know, when I talk about Ethiopia, many people think, oh, the Tigray have already completed the war, but there's still war going on there. They did not target the root causes of the problem. It doesn't take much to stop the Biafra war in Nigeria or the issues going on in Nigeria. It doesn't take much to stop the war in Mali. It doesn't take much to stop the war in Burkina Faso, Chad, all over the eastern part of Congo, where we have the worst humanitarian crisis going on. It doesn't take much for Kagame to sit on the table with... Uh, with uh, Chisikedi to look at the root cause of the problem. All these wide washing solutions that Africa is giving to the poor problems of war in the continent, it's not helping. If you look at Ethiopia, for example, a lot of people were jubilating about the issue in Tigray. I mean, the resolution of the problem in Tigray by you know the signing of a court between the central government and the Tigray. But as we speak now, there's still war going on in that country because while they were doing that, they forgot to target the root causes and forgot the Ohama people who started some of the problems in Ethiopia, they didn't bring them to the table. Now they rose up and they are fighting again and the Ethiopian government is back to its vomit. What does it take for the government of Cameroon to take those people, sit on the negotiating table and say, look, we are spending colossal sums of money on this war in North West. Let's sit down as brothers and sisters and discuss what the root cause of this problem so that the country can come back to the footing of economic viability. What does it take for Paul Kagame to call Chisikedi and the guy in Uganda and other people to sit down on that regional conference and say, look, our economy is being decimated. What are we fighting for? Let's sit down and see how we can find the root cause of this problem and have a negotiated agreement where everybody's happy at the end of the day and we start thinking about development. What does it take for Idris DP8? No to sit down and say, I agree for a settlement to give power to a civilian government. There are issues here, but I think we can do A, B, C and do this and come to an agreement so that I hand over power to a civilian government. It doesn't take much for conflict resolution in Africa, but number one problem that Africa is facing is war and conflict. And I'm afraid to say that back centuries. It's going to take a long time this continent to talk about things that we want to talk about. We want to sit here and talk about the free trade agreement. We want to sit here and talk about you know development in Cameroon, development in Ghana, development in these countries. But the moment we sit here, we're going to hear guns blazing on this other side, gun blazing, and we're back to square. We want to talk about war. As long as we have not stopped, resolved the root causes of this issue on the African continent. Luis and the rest of the panelists, I'm afraid in the next 10 years we'll be here talking about what went wrong in Africa. So that is the number one problem on the continent of Africa, which was and still continue to be a black eye on the continent. War and war and war. And then in the war, it uh, remains a top priority. Science the gun is not working. African Union, which uh, put in place that agenda 2020 to silence the gun it's definitely a bull, toothless bulldog like many are, are you know, referring to. Okay, let's get now to our topic of discussion for today, which is looking at the new scramble for Africa and how the continent can avert this or better still take advantage of the new scramble we 
have France uh, and China leading uh, this new scramble, the United States as well as uh, Russia equally, uh, all of them fighting to have a fair share of the continent. We saw recently the United States hosting the U.S.-Africa summit that saw some about 55 African heads of state uh, assembled in the United States and uh, Joe Biden, United States president, promising he's going to increase his country's investment on the continent of about 55 billion uh, dollars in the in three coming years or in three years and uh, this of course many say was the excitement on camera only as African heads of states who attended the summit uh, never uh, were moved by these promises considering that Obama made the same promises during his inauguration in 2014 but it promises were never realized and many are equally saying that this uh, a new U.S. Africa summit and this uh, scramble. Of course, the United States is coming purposely to counter Russia's in, a influence on the continent. Mr. and Jim Emmanuel, looking at the um, new scramble for Africa, where you take a close look at the role China is playing, United States, France on the continent. Do you think this could anyway be on the advantage of African continents, considering that we are the ones who have the raw materials and they are the ones coming into? you know, seek interest, you know, uh, is it going to be of advantage? Structurally, uh, I'll answer it like yes. We need to know that the world is global. <coughs> no one can live as an, as an, as an island. Uh -huh. So in that light, I think we both need each other. The missing bearing here for those who are used to driving and riding on bikes. It's like a chain. If one of the knot comes out, mm -hmm. it cannot completely carry it. It, it, ca it cannot carry the tire again. Mm -hmm. So what we are seeing here is a situation where Africa has failed in terms of bargaining. Because we would have been talking about the bargaining power. Mm -hmm. Because if they had the bargaining strength, what we should be looking at should be a situation of equal partners talking business, not a superior mm -hmm. talking business to an inferior. But that is the case in which we are observing here. You see, it comes back to what I told you a while ago, that the president of a country sits in his country sends, I call it a convocation, not an invitation, for some old type sitting squirrels in Africa to carry their luggages with a, an entourage that you cannot even mention to go with to his country money. with taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. Whereas those very taxpayers' money, they don't have roots. In fact, they don't have anything yet you see i will repeat what i have said elsewhere african presidents are celebrities when it comes to making speeches and slogans because when they go there and you hear the kind of slogans and the speeches that they will present you will think that africa can be transformed overnight into a paradise yet they are living and feeding on those species and slogans out of that, they are not pragmatic. And I think, like Elijah said, we have to be solution-focused. It is time for African president to bypass speeches and slogans to become pragmatic. Mm. If not, if not, I am afraid that there is no degree of patriotism or optimism that will carry us forward. Because we keep talking and talking, speeches, nothing changes. Yeah, because you saw uh, Maki Sa during uh, the summit said uh, he's uh, opting for Africa to have two seats at the United Nations Security Council, uh, during which uh, Joe Biden said he is offering one seat for Africans at the G20. So I was still coming back to your question that, uh, like, I agree with those who said Biden's declaration on camera was just... A camera declaration. Uh -huh. We saw what happened when Cameroon was claiming at one point in time that there were so much 
into bilateral agreement with the U.S. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure you saw what happened with uh, Agua. Yeah. <laughs> Who is losing? Does Cameroon have the power to go back and be a partner to Agua on her own? No. Has U.S. reconsidered her stand in the domain of the Agua in that direction? No. Which means that when you choose to be a full Louis, mm. the wise people will use you as food. African leaders with everything that we have in this continent, African leaders have chosen to be fools. And because they are fools, the, the, the West, who are the wise, are feeding on them mm. as food. Because at this time that we are talking, they went, they saw, they returned back to Africa. Yeah. They slept in good hospital, in good uh, hotels. hotels. Mm -hmm. They drank good water. Tell me any of them who came home having a project that if I saw Lincoln's Hotel in U.S., I want to build the similar hotel back in my country. If the route that were leading to the hotel summit were three-way carriage route. That is exactly what I'm going to do for my country. They do, it's like they don't think something is wrong with them. They go there, they enjoy all those facilities. They don't ask themselves. The people who constructed these facilities, are they working on this planet or they are coming from Jupiter? Yet, they enjoy uh, they enjoy it. it was even beautiful women there. They come them back free of charge. They don't have any project. What has killed African leaders is that most of these guys know nothing. Yet, they are found in positions that they are supposed to do everything. Okay. And it is regrettable. Okay. If you don't have a clue of a particular thing, and they put you there to do, and you are put to do everything there. The results are already known. Failure. Total failure. How can you imagine that in the 21st century, somebody who is supposed to be carrying a nation, carrying a nation means that you need enough energy. That person is somewhere to represent a nation and does not even know the audience that he's supposed to talk to. It tells us that because of all these weaknesses, the white man has mastered the soft spot in us. We have everything that the world needs. Yet, we lack everything that Africa needs. I repeat, we have everything that the world needs. Yet, we beg everything that Africa needs. Okay. Why? Because those who are supposed to be there are not there. With the death of Sankara, Muammar Gaddafi, and the rest, who had a vision for Africa, I am afraid that the death of this great visionary, they were buried in their, in their, in their graves with a vision of Africa. Mm -hmm. The present Africa that we have now is visionless. Why? Can I have people, some of them, even... Uh, ex-convicts they are given posts of responsibility in their countries of origin and you expect such people with very low moral standard to drive a country into prosperity whereas their moral cannot drive their own person to prosperity there is no prosperity in the world that silence morality leaves mm -hmm. because it is prosperity is a product of morality to think that I want to build a road so that my people should not be die of accident is a product of morality to think that touching state funds is a crime that's a product of morality mm -hmm. now Anyway, you are a reputable journalist. I will not question your topic. If not, I would have even questioned the word scramble. Do you think they are scrambling? Except you are telling me that they are scrambling within themselves, coming from the West. 
But as it stands, the gateway entering Africa is free for anybody who has something to offer to the head of states. Because Africa, as we are talking today, is an Africa for the head of states, not Africa for Africans. Okay. And that's a problem. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jewum Emmanuel. Uh, let's talk with Mr. Five is now. Africa is one of the world's richest uh, continents, and we equally understand, just from what Mr. Jewum said, that we lack the bargaining power. Do you think this is the reason why uh, Africa is easily, you know, carried away as a continent into a country to attend what we just saw as a U.S. Africa summit? The lack of bargaining power. Do you think that's the reason why we cannot be able to stand on our own? Um, it is part of the reason. But I yeah. agree. Let me tell Africans how this jigsaw puzzle operates in the world. The whites, hear me very well. Whether you call yourself UN, ECO, uh, you call yourself uh, European Union Bloc and all the like. It's a whole international political jigsaw puzzle. What happens is that there are world economic powers are not scrambling for Africa. They are partitioning Africa. They are not scrambling. They are partitioning. Because how do you explain that no African country is a member of the UN Security Council? A whole continent. And no leader is questioning because when Gaddafi wants to talk, they use the same people in Libya to assassinate Gaddafi. And today, they are suffering and wallowing in abject poverty and killing themselves, haters, quarter, with guns left and right. It means that the problem first stem from the way the West are manning their political agenda for developing countries. It's so sad. They are hearing me. They are all vampires. They are hearing. What does it mean? It means that through the half of the world, what we call meetings, segment by segment and block by block, G20, G8, G this, and everybody is calculating his own interest because in international relations, interest is at the forefront. Your own interest. That's clear. If Mr. Joe Biden talks about giving us 55 billion. Those foreign African leaders will be happy. Because it will be money they will give. And they will not control it because they know that we will embezzle it. So they come after that money and they start looting our natural resources that within a period of time will double, triple, and quadruple the money they gave us. When I hear Japanese schools, Chinese schools, give from this and that, there's no free gift. I don't know who told these African leaders that those are free gifts. Please, may I remind you that even the non, in the international, even the international non-governmental organizations that offer gifts are not gifts as per se. Because their work on the African continent is to gather useful information that they send to their home countries to work on developing policies that will enable them to penetrate the African continent and continue to keep us at the begging stage. What does it mean? The education we acquired from the colonial days is what is still killing us to today. When you hear a master degree, what does it mean? It means you become a master in the physics program curriculum, the program I gave to you. You are a master in the history, European history they gave to you. In the Cameroon history that was written mostly by them and all the like. These are where the errors are coming from. Mr. Luis, let me ask, tell you something. You cannot, because Leeds University, listen very well, though. Daya research, I need to feel the research on this African continent. I am not getting any feeling of Daya research, sir. I told you, leave that Leeds University and come to this Africa, onto this African continent. The researches are too many with no results. I'm sorry to tell you, sir. These American people with researches are left to write Japan researches on African continent. Nothing is working because they research, get our weaknesses, take the weaknesses back, develop their policy, come and deceive the African leaders and loot our resources. Researches are not doing us any good as I speak now. 
Mr. Luis, you will not understand that at every presidency, you have economic advisors. African, listen, all those 54 countries, at all their presidencies, they have economic advisors. Mm -hmm. It means there are experts in economic issues and development. What do they do? At every vice president office or prime minister, they have economic advisors. At the level of governorship, they have economic advisors. At the level of district, they have economic advisors. If you go to all these African continent, they have one of the finest economic professors. I call them professors of theory. Adam Smith did this. Will Smith did this. Adam Smith went up and down. Those grammars. If you go to the African continent, like you come to Cameroon, we have business schools dotted here and there. You have only business schools, Dwala business schools and all the like. Working on theories. Practicality, zero. How do we understand that an entire African continent cannot come out of economic quagmire with professors of economics, PhD holders? It is a sacrilege. They keep blowing grammar, University of Boya, University of Bamenda, University of Bangui, University of Bamako, and all the like. What is their work? Zero. Apart from blowing grammar and theory. What is the essence of all of this? Cameroon, you have Minister of Economy, Planning and Regional Development. When the Chinese looked at their economy, Luis, some 30 years ago, when they were at a developing rate just like Africa, and what did they do? They said, we are going to, ex we are going to send Chinese nationals on scholarship to foreign universities. What was the reason? To study the knowledge and bring back home. Ghana did the same. And that's why China now is threatening America and making America to tremble and summoning 54 head of states. Because America now knows that China has a role to play. The same case with other European countries. So what am I saying here? I'm simply saying that Africa has all it takes, but their educational system needs to be changed, restructured, because it is not doing any good to us. We have whistleblowers and grammar, grammaticians, grammarians. If it's French, Professor de Economie, they will tell you a grammar here. You see Africa more than Europe. Practically zero. PhD professor in economics and development in this university, this university, all those things are not being honest good. How do you understand that President Joe Biden White House, listen to very well because you put in your smart. White House, this university, take this message to the university, take it over there to the White House. By the time the invitation was coming to the African continent, I did a research and investigation and realized that President Joe Biden, in his invitation, insisted on the head of state and not representatives. American ambassador to Cameroon. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. You know the, the content of what I'm talking about. American ambassador to Kenya. American ambassador to um, Zambia, America ambassador to Malawi. They know what I'm talking about. The letter stipulated, this is on intelligent sources, I'm telling them. It was insisting on presidents of head of state to come and not representatives, no, foreign ministers. Mr. Lewis, let me tell you the other mafia. The next mafia in that meeting in Washington was that the meeting that was talking about the real reason why the African head of state were invited, no other person apart from the head of state were in that room. Their bodyguards, their entourage were sent out of the room. It was closed door discussions, which I got it. Washington here very well, eh? because you think you're smart. And in that meeting, the promises were made. I want to tell you that only three African head of state asked questions that did not get satisfied answers as to what will be the benefits of their respective countries. The meeting was more of a, an informative meeting and not a discussion meeting in Washington. America know what I'm talking about. Which means before the African head of states were arriving in Washington, the agenda had been drawn. That's how the West functions. 
And this agenda, many believe it's uh, to counter Russia's uh, influence in, in Africa. No, that is the reason, yes. But the other reason there is how do we tap the resources of these persons and make ourselves great, given that we have been sleeping for a long while. So economic agenda was what took the center stage of that meeting. And it explains why most of the African head of states who went there came back with propaganda. False propaganda. I will remind those in Yaoundé who have been blowing whistle that the Anglophone crisis was discussed there. It's a lie. Yeah, very well. I got one barrister in America who said um, Anglophones, uh, those who were supporting the station in the like, were arrested because thanks to him. I said it's a lie. They should hear very well. Anglophone crisis did not feature because America had their agenda. How do we convince these African leaders to make the environment safe for America to penetrate in their businesses and to keep out China and Russia? That was top of the agenda. Anybody, because I have said this, Mr. Lewis, and I'm educating Cameroonians, since I will live on lies and propaganda, those Cameroonians who were indicted in the US of A was not because they smuggled gone to Cameroon and that were causing disorder. No. It was because they did not respect the policy of exporting guns from America. It was not because they sent the guns to Cameroon that the Cameroon's Department of External Relations and a host of other whistleblowers said it is thanks to them. I say it's a lie. They should hear very well. I am waiting for any minister in Cameroon, ambassador in Washington, who come out to challenge this. I will be waiting. And so at the end of it, the business that took Cameroon president, African president, there was not Anglophone. It was not, it did not even feature. I say it did not even feature. So you can imagine that why they take African presidents on invitation and on instruction to Washington to draw an agenda to enslave us economically. Others came back and they were singing songs of victory. Deceiving Cameroonians that we fought a good fight. And I told people that when you are under this international relation, those who have done it understand. If Cameroonians in America contributed in selling weapons out of America, there is never a day you can expect them to be transferred as American citizens for you to be judged in your home in, in Cameroon where they come from. It can never happen. American law does not permit that. If you follow diplomatic rules, as per se, if they was come to the world, they could be judged in America. And then they could be punished. They are not sent to the home country where they are known as American citizens and no longer Cameroonian citizens. But if you find a case like the Rwandan genocide, most of the mayors, the ministers who were sent back in a special tribunal were sent back because they were nationals of, uh, of, of Rwanda. They, had not, they were not having that identity as we find over there. And when it comes to indictment, it's a whole process. Now, I'm giving you a scenario whereby we have left the object and we are chasing the shadow. Like in the case of Cameroon. Everybody, we got national media, we got some of the other blowing grammars. I saw lies telling. And I told them the thing that we are fools that we could not, we do not know what transpired out there in Washington, D.C. It explains now to learn, Mr. Lewis, that the agenda of America and other countries asking African countries to come is because they want us to continuously stay in slavery. That's what I'm saying, that the African leaders are the ones who have caused us to be in this trouble. Because America has its motto, if you, in God we trust. And all the presidents will tell you in their slogans, America first. And you understand that the African continent are not, the leaders are not bothered. Whether we die in the Mediterranean Sea, whether we hold guns and we are fighting political parties, is not their business. I will tell you what is shocking, Mr. Lewis. I went to Gunoko village of recent, and in a village called Njinibi, where they were entering a traditional leader. I don't know whether he was, he was a legal leader or not, but the armored cars I saw there were not the normal armored cars I used to see normally on the Anglophone crisis. He is a member of the Northwest House of Chiefs. And I asked myself, we don't have roads to come to this village. Health centers in this area have been abandoned due to the crisis. But this is a brand, we had more than four brand new armored cars of exceptional quality. With one, 
what over 500 million sent to this area are we serious africans if you stay around limbe watch the number of new brand hillocks war jeeps moving into manawobe africa has lost the focus because the leaders no longer have confidence in them they now consider all their finances in military warfare or military equipment and mr joe biden who says he's the number one of democracy could not school these leaders that what you are doing to your people is bad he did not do that i was expecting president joe biden to look at the head of state and said please we want to promote democracy you you have ever stayed in power you you have ever done this we be we, we appeal on you if you want us to african continent please limit your term follow american democracy and we will assist you financially President Joe Biden, he did not say that. You can now see that the West like to have dictators in power who will stay as long as they want and they begin to play to the gallery in favor of the West at the detriment of the people they pretend to govern. Okay. It is a sacrilege. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fivis. And let's hear from you, uh, Mr. Elijah Inoku. Uh, you are a researcher with Leeds University on Africa Development. Uh, your focus is Africa Development. And we're looking at, at the new scramble for Africa. This is coming several years Africa, uh, since African countries in independence. And we've seen a new scramble for Africa. What has gone wrong or went wrong? Or why is it that Africa, since so, uh, over these years, has not been able to maybe build uh, a solid block, to stand as a solid block or to stand as a union, like African Union, why are we still here? Why are we still being called uh, as a continent to attend a summit in a country just like what we saw recently, the U.S. Africa summit? Oh, several years since after independence, we are still here. Mr. Lewis, thanks for giving me the microphone, and I hope you'll give me the time to speak as well because I need enough time to respond to all what I'm sitting in the studio there because I've been indicted. I've been put on the spotlight as well. So we need to talk about Africa and be very, very conscious of everything that we are speaking about yeah you have you have First and to like that. go ahead the scramble for africa is real there's nobody that every country in the whole wide world has an interest africa needs to be aware of this whether it is in the united states whether it is canada whether it is cameroon whether it is ghana africa needs to be aware that every country in the whole wide world as an interest, there is no free lunch in the international community. So all these baby crying and say, oh, African president went to Washington. That is not where the matter is. We are chasing shadows. Whether there's still going to be African US summit, there's going to be Africa China summit, there's going to be Africa Japan summit. Whether you agree with the polemics of it or not, it's not what matters. Let's talk about what Africa is not doing right. Let me begin by talking about these collateral, I mean, a bilateral agreement or multilateral agreements. Every country in the world, Mr. Fai Evis and my other colleague, will have agreements with other countries. It is what you are going to the table with. Do you understand what you are going to negotiate or you do not understand? As we speak, Russia is in Africa. Russia is negotiating agreements with a lot of African countries. But as we speak, 80% of those negotiating contracts are war contracts. Does that make sense, Mr. Fire Evers? Do you need an economist from Lakes University or do you need an economist from Yanda University to tell you that that's cacophony? That you are negotiating 80% of contracts with Russia, formerly as we speak, are war contracts. Who benefits? Of course it's not Africa. We don't need rocket science to understand this. Number two, Corruption on the continent of Africa is not carried out by the Western world. Because that is an epidemic that we, uh, that we need to deal with on the African continent. Recently, it was announced that in Nigeria, 98% of Nigerian oil is stolen on Nigeria's soil. It is not stolen by Westerners. It's not stolen by the West. In Cameroon, recently we saw the auction of Dondon who stole 26.6.7 billion CFA dollars. It wasn't stolen by a Westerner. It wasn't a Western contract that did that. Recently, we saw in Nigeria, 
that 150 million naira would disappear from the central bank. It wasn't stolen by Westerners. Let's be very honest that Africa are our own problem. Let's stop chasing shadows here. The problem in Africa is that we do not have leaders and that love the continent of Africa. How long did it take for Mugufuli to transform Tanzania? Within four years, he transformed that country. How long did it take for Thomas Sankara to transform the educational uh, sector in in, in Pinaka at this time? Within four years, the literacy rate went from 15% to a colossal 77%. It didn't take a Westerner. It didn't take the West. It wasn't Russia. It wasn't United States. It wasn't. So let's stop chasing shadows here. The problem in Africa is Africans. As long as we do not understand this, that our own problem is that we have not put in place institutions that are going to guarantee the development for the nation. We do not put in place institutions that are going to guarantee that we can compete with the rest of the world. Again, we are still going to be here chasing shadows and talking about Joe Biden, talking about Russia, all that we want. Those countries have their interests, and the problem is not their interest. They will come to Africa to sell their weapons. Who has the weapons? Nobody holds Africa and holds their hands and says, you must buy weapons to fight the people. But you are the one who is foolish. We are the one who are foolish in Africa to begin to go into contracts that are against our own interests. Let's get this right. I want to talk about the instead of going else with the power, if Africa would stand up and say, we are going to demand that you export your technology, we're going to buy your technology and to invest into the sector that we can compete. If Africa is able to export that technology, that they can go into extensive industrialized agriculture, because that's a strong suit. As we all know, 30% of the world's land, that is edible. That's to say, you don't need fertilizer. You don't need manure. You don't need anything. You just need to till the ground and plant your crops, and it grows. It's in Africa. But recently, we saw that an African president, Makaisa, how to Russia, release a power on the Black Sea, so that Africa can start have, having flour to eat. That is an eyesore. Who brought this misfortune upon us? We, the Africans. And to tell you that immediately those grains were released, it became an eyesore that the first can, uh, battalion of grains went to Sierra Leone, as we speak. But Sierra Leone is one of the countries with the most fertile land in Africa. We are on Let's leave the best aside. Please, let's go on to The problem with Africa is corruption and war. It's not the West. It's not the United States. The United States have its own interests. But no one, nobody came to, have, to come around and say, you must begin to do this or do that, do that. It is us. And number three, I want to say, say I said from the that if we keep on doing what we are doing in Africa, in terms of conflict resolution, we will be here in the next 20 years. Because the conflict in Africa, I will explain to you what those conflicts are doing. In terms of borrowing, every country in the world borrows. I have said this over and over. The problem is not that African countries are borrowing. The problem is that what do they borrow the money to do? They borrow the money in order to fight wars. Mr. Evans, you yourself have done given a testament about the number of armored cars that you see in the Northwest and the Southwest. Is that a productive economic model? You don't need rocket science. You don't need to be economists. You don't need to be a development expert to know that that is a model for failure. That when you borrow money at a whopping 10% interest from the IMF and the World Bank, and you borrow that money, what do you do? You put into fighting wars, buying armored cars, and all not, and the rest you invest. You guys are in Cameroon, you're sitting in Cameroon. You heard about the COVID gate. You heard about the Olympic, Olympic gate. You heard about uh, uh, the Glencoe gate. You heard about all these scandals that are going in the country. Tell me which Western country was involved in that. We are our own problem. Let's Call is paid, is paid. The problem in Africa, whether you're talking about the scramble of Africa or not, Africa does has not had its priorities for that. We do not know what we want, or we know what we want, but personal interest and lack of institutions that are going to guarantee. Because yesterday, I will give you an example. Two days ago, uh, Colonel uh, Asimi Goiter, he gave a communique and said, 
he's giving um, uh, some sort of uh, an amnesty to all those who have stolen from the public budget. He gave them 48 hours to return all the admiral, all the cars, money, and to whatever you've stolen. In 48 hours, within 48 hours, the public treasury was, I think they gathered 48 million francs, billion, sorry, 48 billion francs. Does that tell you the problem that we have in Africa or not? That just because the military leader has given an ultimatum that all those who have stolen from the public coffers should return the money, within 48 hours, they were able to recover 48 point something billion CFA. My brothers and sisters in the studio, or brothers in the studio, the problem in Africa is not the West. The problem in Africa is Africa. Until we realize that we are on problem, we'll be here chasing shadows, chasing the West, chasing in Washington, chasing China, chasing this, and we are leaving where the problem is. Corruption is killing Africa. Nepotism is killing Africa. War is killing Africa. And in terms of boring that I mentioned, the Britain Woods institutions, where you're talking about the World Bank or the IMF, they're going to borrow your money. But they borrow your money based on your credit ratings. Cameroon, as we speak, has a B minus credit ratings. The United States has an A plus plus credit rating. So, which means if Cameroon goes to the IMF to borrow money, they will borrow somewhere at a rate of 10 to 15 percent. America goes to the same IMF to borrow money, they'll borrow at 0.5 percent. Cameroon will spend a lot of the time servicing those debts, going through a spiral ratio of debts and servicing and debt and servicing. The United States will invest that money in order to do what? In order to develop its economy. And where did Karun get? How did Karun get to that full credit rating? It went through corruption, war, mismanagement, embezzlement, first institutional system that is going to maintain checks and balances. Those things are not in that economy, and therefore your economy is rated as a flight risk. Because the risk of defaultment is there. And what is going to end up happening? Like what we saw in Ghana. Ghana having done everything right. But finally they find themselves under the hammer of the IMF with the structural adjustment program. They have gone back. And what is going to happen is that these international breaking wooden are going to control the economy of Ghana. They have no control of that economy right, right now. They are going to tell them what to do. They're going to tell them what sector to invest in. They're going to tell them what not to do. And do you think it's for Ghana, Ghanaian interest? No. It's for their own interest. So, gentlemen on the studio, let us put a nail where it belongs. The problems of Africa is Africa. The problem of Africa is not West. Period. That is where we should hammer. African sit tight, corrupt leaders who have no accountability for their countries need to get out of the stage and give room for people who can rule and let the people understand. People who can go to a negotiating table and put priorities before the international community, that is going to benefit the common man. The common man. Not putting on priorities to maintain, sit tight, prisoner in power. As I mentioned to you, you talk about Agora. What was the percentage of investment or transaction between Agora and, uh, and Cameroon? One percent. So it didn't mean anything to the United States. One percent of economic transactions. So it meant nothing to them. But they will do everything that will military base, whatever they want to have in Africa. They will maintain their own ministry base because they are strategic to them. It is true that they're going to fight the influence of Russia on the continent. But who is the fool who is going to turn those military bases? Who is the fool who is going to sign those accords with them? We Africans are the fools. They have their interests. You cannot blame them, gentlemen. We have to blame ourselves. Until we come to that position where we know that we are our own problems, we will not get out of this problem. If you talk about conflict, for example, what stops Cameroon to sit on the negotiation table as brothers and sisters and say, this problem has been dragged along. We are going to destroy our economy. This is going to kill the country. Let's solve this problem once and for all. It doesn't take long. What stops uh, Chad, Burkina Faso, to... to, to and the rest of the tribes in the north to sit down for a negotiated settlement. What stops them? It is just the fact that we are our own problem. That is where we find ourselves. We are. Let us not blame the West. The West they did their own worst in terms of imperialism, but nobody is with a gun on top of our head and say you must sign this loan, you must go into this contract, you must not go into this negotiated settlement. We are the one causing the problem ourselves. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's where I want to end uh, this section, this sector. Before I give you the microphone, let's. Lay the blame where it belongs. Africa, it is its own problem. We are our worst enemy, not the West. 
got you clearly thanks very much for highlighting that africa you say it's its own problem and you highlighted clearly that corruption and war is uh, africa's biggest problem so we have corruption uh, in every part of the war and war of course if we have to consider the fact that weapons uh, were created to fight wars but now wars are created so that weapons could be sold if we want to go by that principle we we, we look at what is happening in the, um, happen in Central Africa, uh, the situation in Mali, if we recall that clearly, and uh, it's proven that the West is behind sponsoring the jihadists in uh, Mali, causing destabilization. Now we understand that when there's destabilization and the West is doing everything possible to cause chaos and the destabilization, there's room for people to steal. The West is creating destabilization so that they themselves can have the opportunity to sell their guns and to equally propose deals to governments that are being threatened certainly by rebels and if we have to consider all this do we blame africa entirely just like mr elida is saying that we are on problems without pointing the fingers to the worst which we know very well that is playing a key role when it comes to africa's destabilization in most cases with what uh, my brother Elijah says. I know he's a researcher and he must have done a lot of research in Africa. You know, uh, and that research should include areas of um, conflict. Mm. And I would have thank God we are still on the platform. I want Mr. Elijah to prove me otherwise on this platform. Mm. To tell me he has maintained and he has repeatedly said Africa is their problem. Yes, we agree. Huh? To an extent, we agree. But to say that nobody should blame the West is where I contrast with him sharply. Why do I say so? Let me just give you the, the case of Chad. Except he's not uh, very much interested in looking into happenings in some counties in Africa. We know very well that the war in Chad was caused by the Western world. I, I cannot understand that. And, fact, and, and I am not understanding it larger. Let Idris Deby uh, said during an interview granted to African media that he did not change the constitution of his country. He was not ready France to France did it. France changed the constitution. France. These are facts that can be verified. Mm -hmm. I'm saying I'm actually lost. I'm not understanding Elijah even a bit on this particular point. There are a lot of things he has said that I can buy his idea. But to consistently, I mean, repeatedly, consistently say we should not blame the West. And he keeps using this word, we, we, we. Mr. Elijah, I don't form part of that way that you are saying that we should not blame the West. Let me tell you that you and I, what we are doing here, we are offering only voice services. You and I, we do not have what it takes yeah, to call them to order. That is a fact. And if Mr. Elijah actually had what it takes to come and salvage Africa, he would have been in Cameroon today. Maybe with me walking the streets of Kachi General Yaoundé to change things. You and I have only opinions. Those who are supposed to implement decide to listen and they decide to act or not and you and i have nothing over it we don't have any power we cannot wield the power to them these ammo cars have not been bought by you and i we hate to see them but we must see them why and it is your money you are seated there you have a family back home and i know how much you have invested in cameroon in larger Part of the taxes you pay on your investment in Cameroon, Mr. Elijah, are used to buy these ammo cars. Not because you want it. Because the system made it so. And to say that the West is not part of our problem will be an error of monumental proportion. Because how do you explain the fact that the West needs a war market? I mean, a, 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 a weaponry market. 
and they have found it in Africa. They will do everything to destabilize Africa so that when we are fighting, we turn to them. I've quoted the case of Chad. Let me now quote the case of Mali. In 2013, when France was fully Mali, under Keta, that they were coming there to maintain peace and to drive out terrorists. France actually had an invisible hand manipulating and destabilizing Mali at that time. When the Malians started gaining consciousness that this thing was not from within, it was from without, France turned to become very brutal. And that is why France decided to start banning some areas in that county that the military of that county should not visit. Because France discovered that these people are beginning to discover us. And if we don't block them, if they finally discover us, then we are finished. All the weapons in Mali between that period up to the period of Asimi Goita were coming from France. Now, Russia has come in, of which some people think Russia is a better devil. Yet, Russia is marketing Russia arms, the, 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 the rocket launchers or in Africa, they are being brought in by Russia. How then can my brother say that we should be blaming Africa? I will agree with him, or I would have agreed with him, if he made it clear that we should blame African leaders for their ignorance. You know, there is this Igbo uh, proverb that you don't sell uh, your brothers to a buyer and you expect that buyer to trust you. The people from the West do not trust African leaders and African leaders are too ignorant to have noticed that. Why? They know that African leaders have sacrificed the African population for their own personal gains to sell Africa back. That's why I refuse to, to uh, subscribe to the word scramble. Scramble. African leaders are once scrambling to sell back Africa to the West. Not the West scrambling to have us. It may appear physically that they are scrambling. But then, if you look at it, if you actually look at it critically, you will discover that African leaders are the ones scrambling to hand over Africa to the West for their personal gain. So there is nowhere in the world where somebody will debate the fact that 70% of Africa or 70% of wars and instability in Africa is caused by the West. It's not by the Africans. The rule played by Africans to promote this instability and war is the ignorance of our leaders. That is where my brother Inuaku should be placing his argument. Not that we, because he's saying that we should nail it where the nail is supposed to be nailed. If we nail it well, and if we start examining wars that have been caused in Africa by France, France is the colonial master of Cameroon. Six years counting. Have you heard France come out in the open to condemn what is happening in Cameroon? If they condemn, and Cameroon decides to sign an accord. Just see what happened between Cameroon and Russia. France was already panicking everywhere. U.S. panicking. Why? Their interest is threatened. Their interest, forget about anything called political interest. There is no political interest in all these things you see. The bottom line, like my, my senior journalist, uh, Far Evans said there, the bottom line circles, rotates around economic benefits there's nothing called political interest they they use political interest or political terms as a way to lure us what is in that politics in the first place the political part is just that when they see a leader that can agree to die in power even after 40 years but that will serve their interest economically they will maintain that leader. The day that leader threatens their economic interests, that leader will be out. There's no gainsaying 
that France has done it in many places in Africa, and they can still do it. The only fortunate thing at the time we are talking is that many African countries are beginning to realize that France is not a better partner to deal with. Mm. I am not stigmatizing France in this program. I am saying what we are seeing every day. I will insist. I have said it somewhere, some time ago. If France leaves Africa, the problems of Africa would drastically reduce. Okay. So to think that we can blame Africa as the sole proprietor of war and instabilities in Africa is a, is a farce. It's untrue. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Nzium Emmanuel. Uh, Mr. Fai, Can I quickly Mr. respond uh, for one second? All right, Mr. Elijah, let's, let's hear you. Okay. Yeah, I, I want to be very clear here. Right. <laughs> I want to be very clear here. We do understand, Mr. Emmanuel and my good colleague, uh, Fai, we do understand the influence of the West. But what we are saying is, Mr. Emmanuel, you're a married man. I suppose nobody comes to your house to begin to judge matters between you and your wife except one of you open the door to that person. That is what I mean. Nobody's going to come to you and say, you know, the man's wife invites that person or God see something happen. The point to me, opening the way. The ways the Lord come in and tie our hands. You talk about child. Let me just quickly make this in one second. You talked about child. Do you know that? The late Idris Deby gave a speech and said France came in, tried to maintain it in power. Was Zid not within his power to say, no, I cannot hang on to power. I can give up power. That's what our leaders say. Okay. Do you know that in Mali, the imam of Baku has successfully negotiated peace with the so-called rebels in the north? But because of the powers that be, these people have rejected that peace power. It did work for a time. So what I'm saying is, Africans can solve their own problem if we have the political goodwill for that. Did you know that the Tuaregs in the north, Burkina Faso, if they come back, they, they were asking for some sort of regional autonomy. 99% of some of the wars that we find in Africa, including Cameroon, is because Sitai president refused to give even regional autonomy to people that have enjoyed that autonomy for long. What is difficult giving that to your people? It doesn't take long. It's the same thing with the Tuareg, the same thing in Ethiopia, the same thing in Chad. If Africa leader, when I say we, I mean our own leaders, we cannot reject them. They are our people. So I'll say that's what I mean by we, we the people, including the president. We have the power to change the narrative in Africa. That's just what I wanted to say. Okay, we got you clearly. And certainly, we said you. He say, like I said, I buy some of his points, but I insist. When he gave a very good example, if marriage people knew all in solving their marital affairs, marital counselors would not be existing. And witnesses would not have been witnesses there. would not be existing. Okay. The mayors would not have been existing. All right. So in this slide, to to to, to state link to that example. Africa is still a third world continent in many domains. We cannot pretend that we can solve our problem when at the same time we need to import technology from the West. Mm -hmm. And that is where they have power over us. Look, take the case of Cameroon. We had the second bridge over the way. You know the people who, who, who did the job? Mm -hmm. Were they Cameroonians? Do we have qualified engineers in Cameroon to do such a job? Even if I agree with him somehow, because the so-called ministers we have, all their children are out of the continent, okay. studying elsewhere. All right. And when they study, they don't even, nothing obliges them to come back with that technological know-how to practice it back in Africa. So, Mr. Elijah, we are saying the same thing, but the thing is that to think that Africa's problems, uh, insecurity, wars, should be placed okay. on Africa. No. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Ndiru.
Mr. Five, this during Mr. Elijah Noko's uh, argument, he highlighted the fact that the National Monetary Fund is presently in Ghana and is taking over Ghana's economy. And he, on his part, it's for the good of Ghana, uh, the IMF restructuring Ghana's economy. We understand equally very well that the IMF is a weapon of the West. No, no, no. You didn't get me wrong. I said it's not for the good of Ghana. The IMF okay. is not there for the good of Ghana. Okay. <laughs> All right, Mr. Elijah. Okay. Now, <laughs> that is clear. We, 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 we have it clear on that. And uh, let's be on the aspect of the International Monetary Fund. Mm -hmm. Magufuli on his part resisted taking loans from uh, the IMF because uh, these are institutions that give you loans and uh, it becomes a trap and it holds you down, it you know, limits your, the progress of your economy because you now have to follow the rules and regulations of the fact that you, you have loans from the institutions. Now we're looking at uh, this international monetary fund as a weapon of uh, the Western Africa and considering what Mr. Elijah Ecoli said, now let's just hear from you. Mr. Elijah, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing a uh, big brother. You are a very good researcher. Very a very perfect one. But may I make some corrections along the line? In your presentation, and God, you talk about we opened the door for the West to come. No. I would, I would, I would, I would suggest that Mr. Elijah should read the foundation history of Africa. I'm not talking about the entire history. I say foundation history. How did the West get to us? We are a victim of circumstance. In that. Development started somewhere, people were enlightened somewhere while we were in the dark continent. And then they took advantage of our situation. It's like a man needs money to save his pregnant woman and his poor. And he comes to you and tells you, Please, can you borrow me 100,000 francs? My wife is dying in the hospital. And you tell him, I will only give you 100,000 francs in the condition that you will, re you will reimburse me uh, with additional 100,000 francs, that is 200,000 francs, before I give you the money. And the man tells you, no problem, no problem, just give me please. And my wife, I need to save my wife first. And he gets the money, saves the wife's treasure in the hospital, and that way he starts understanding that the load of that loan you gave to him is weighing on him. That is what we're talking about. Mr. Elijah, the door was, Africans did not open their hands, the West, because I don't know how nature made it, they were enlightened first before us, that we should accept them. After they took advantage of enlightenment, came into Africa as a dark continent, and took advantage of our naivety. I will cue in with what uh, Mr. Ndiwum said. It was ignorance. Please, we should accept that. Because you will not understand that our local chiefs saw whiskey in a small bottle, rum, and they could bottle healthy men, about 20, because of an old local cup that the woman has won. And a mirror. A mirror. <laughs> And eyeglasses, they could bundle healthy men and ship over to Europe. No, let me just be real. I have said I'm forgiving all our African ancestors who did that. The slave village in Sierra Leone and the port there, the one in Libya and all the like. That is what they did. Gold Coast, Ghana. It is because they are not enlightened. So they are a victim of circumstance that the white man took advantage of us. Therefore, the white man is a devil. That's why it's not yet late as we're creating the, the, the awareness. Now, Mr. Researcher over there has refused to understand that there are causes, that are called remote causes and immediate causes. And the cause of every research, there are causes that you cannot undermine. Africa's causes, I agree, were egoistic, we were this and that, and all the like. But may I remind the researcher, Mr. Eric, that the West cooked up this, what we are going through. It was calculated. I've told you the G8, the GD, the Security Council. That is where the mafia takes place for them to rule the African continent. Accept it or not. That's where the mafia takes place. That's why Russia now, understanding the mafia, and knowing that the mafia now was affecting Russia, that even destroyed the Soviet Union, what should I get up from sleep and say, no lie, I'm going die for you. Better always, always die. I'm sure our researchers should read those histories properly. Probably. 
Now, may I remind our researcher over there, that could take you some few days of researching what I'm talking about, that the World Bank and the IMF is a carefully manned tool to catch Africans' leaders economically for the benefit of the West. May I remind the researcher over there, Leeds University, that when it comes to debt, this is now book work and loans policy. They are unique principles. Principle number one, do you have the capacity to pay back? And if so, how can you pay back? Policy number two, this economist we're talking now, once a loan is to be, has been envisaged, you must be able to show proof of what you want to do with the money before it's offered to you. That is banking operations. I talk as somebody who works in a banking operations that I don't need to announce here. And collateral too. And collateral. And when this is done, rule number three, when the person issuing the loan decides to issue the next, tip, the next thing is steps to guarantee your payback. That is why IMF moves into your economy when they are giving you money. To see how you are spending the money. That way they have access into your economic policies. Now, where are they failing? Which Mr. Eric has refused to understand. It's Elijah. Mr. Elijah, sorry. Who has refused to understand? Where are they failing? Or where does the mafia comes in? They give you a loan of four billion, for example. And all these things are on paper, how you pay back, how you use it. And they refuse to come back to see that as they give you the money step by step, you should implement it as you requested for. Because they know that because our African leaders are corrupt, they will not be able to use it that way. So they misuse it and then fall into a trap. That's why the port of Zanzibar is in trouble today under the Chinese. And that is why I say that, if you look at this, the African leaders themselves get into a trap because these policies have been carefully formulated by the World Bank and the IMF. I might come up because someone's on the line. I think so. We'll just continue. We'll All right. So I am now telling that, saying that, these things you blame. Now, let me remind our lead university researcher. The moment, or rather the first thing we should understand in Africa is that over 85% of the African leaders are put in place indirectly by the West. Quote me anywhere. Over 85%. And how did they do that? From the loan policy formulated, they determine who becomes their next leader. And if a leader bypasses this rule, and you cannot dance the wings and caprices, they unseed you. Case study, Ivory Coast, Laurent Gbagbo. Thomas Sankara, who came in and wanted to be too intelligent than the West, and the West unseated them overnight. Let me come to Cameroon. When the Germans came in, King Douala Mangabel was co-opted to work with the Germans. And when the Germans realized that he was not working in line with their slavery policy, he was executed, just like Marine Bida by the French. Should I give more examples? To tell you that the few Africans who are standing up, Gaddafi, we cannot see African leaders at all. No! Those that stand up, the formulated policies of economic jigsaw puzzle, alongside with what they call motive in French, is given to them to unseat them. This university, you should know these things more than me. You should know them. Because you have good and perfect research facilities than what I suffer here every day with epileptic internet caused by a kangaroo system. So what am I saying, Mr. Lewis? That if we put all of this, you cannot say African leaders have caused these things. Mr. Bia is in Yaoundé. Can we understand that Mr. Bia hands, Mr. Bia's hands are tied? Because the Foreign Reserve of Cameroon are in France and the French Bank, National Treasury. Do you, tell, do you think Mr. Bia likes to stay there in power? No. Mr. Njewu? President Paul Bia is not standing because he likes to stay there until he dies. It's because the French government are backing him up military-wise. You have armored cars given to the, 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 the police, given to the gendarmes, 
and everything, and they tell you, stay there as long as we enjoy our economic interests, we'll back you up to thy kingdom come. It's not because he likes it. And that's what I ask researchers in, who are there in Europe. You must come to Africa before you blow that grammar over there. Because the grammar you do on book work there is made from the writings of the grammar. If you come here, I take you round to the African continent and tell you, look at this man. And most of the African leaders who came to power and wanted to change things, they realized that the terrain is not as per se, they had to pipe low. Those who could not pipe low were unseated. But at the same time, I'm not saying that we should sit because the West is controlling us. We should fold our arms. That's why I say that we need an enlightened Africa, like what is happening in Mali and, uh, and, and uh, like what is happening in Mali and Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso. <clears throat> in that, it will only take somebody who is willing to see hell, to go through that system, breaking through, breaking away from the colonial masters. How do you understand that in Mali, you had four military bases in the northern part of Mali, in which case the Malian army and the Minister of Defense could not visit, neither could their war and ships go through that area. And in the recent bombings in, the 19, uh, in, in, in 2019, in a popular hotel in Bamako, when research was carried out with investigations, the weapons that were used, they were traced to be, to be from French, French manufacturing company. How do you explain that? And so we are not dull. It is because circumstances are forcing based on how the IMF and the, uh, and the World Bank function. And I will tell you, the loan policies they give to Africa is not the same they give to America. It's not the same loan policies they give to the West. It means that it's a careful tool. That's why I said, if African Union was African Union, they would have been able to tell in such a way that we come together as African Union, as Gaddafi proposed, and we walk through the World Bank, we would not have been able to go to the West to fall through this trap. China is another worst colonial power. And, That's why Zanzibar is in trouble. And Mr. Five, someone's reaction here says that uh, China, India was at the same level, colonized just like any other African country. Yep. But they're doing better today, so... And why are they doing better? Mm -hmm. It's because they took the bull by the horn. Just like what and what and Colonial Asimi Goita is doing. Mm -hmm. If you take the bull by the horn, let me tell you something. Colonial Asimi Goita, if you go, let's take first, in, in Mali, for example, mm -hmm. what happens is that, you know, they have banned French uh, language as the official language there. Mm -hmm. It means that if you take the bull by the horn, you see the local realities on the ground, you reshape your academic program. Because the program we're having here, it's a program tailored and put in place by the West. Okay. So I'm saying that it is possible to overcome. Mm -hmm. We are the problem. I'm not refusing. But we are a victim of circumstances that we must accept that the West has a carefully designed policy. Look at what um, Joe Biden is telling us. That you offer 55 billion on the African continent. And no African leader has asked, under what condition are you giving us this money? They sit and clap, drink their wines. And they come back to their various policies and their brain grammar. That they went for a meeting. This is the explanation we're talking about that in less than no time, if you understand these policies, Africa can be blamed, yes, okay. but Africa is a victim of circumstance mm -hmm. that only needs a wake up. That's why we will be on sting the next African president all along. All right. They will leave. Okay. So and that's why we go through the education process here. Mm -hmm. And Africa Media, we thank you very much. Because when I see youths being used to rig elections, used to fight others, it's because the researchers over there have not done a good job. What do we do? To catch this youth so that they don't become vulnerable to these old tight sea dictators who are backed by the West. Remember, they have a little bite. Okay. And so that's why we have a problem. And that's the reality of the African problem, mm -hmm. which we can still go out of it as we speak now. And we'll go out of it, that I am sure. If we take the elite university man there, we take Mr. Antiwum here, we take myself here, I want to tell you in the next five years, all these dictators will not be there because we will put in place a strong measure. I don't want to discuss it because. African presidents are watching us now. If I tell you what we'll do next, they will be very smart. Okay. We will take all of them on our way. They will go, they will, they will pack their bags and go to Europe and stay there and we we'll build a new African continent. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fivis. Uh, you highlighted Africa is a victim of circumstance. And if we want to consider that, we see Mali in 2013 uh, soliciting France to come in and help it, uh, help Mali in fighting insecurity. And uh, just like victim of circumstance, France refused to leave Mali after 10 years of not achieving uh, the reason why they were called into uh, Mali. And when you can look at the fact that there's no African country 
in the United Nations Security Council, whereas the United Nations Security Council focuses on discussions which has to do with security in Africa, but yet no African uh, country is represented at the United Nations Security Council. Do you see this as a problem, Mr. Elijah? Mr. Lewis, let me, let me clarify a couple of things here and be very, very clear on what we are talking about. When we say Africa has own problem, we are talking about us, me, you, everybody, president, everybody included. But again, the ball lies in the court of those who are in leadership. Included. Botswana, for example, was colonized. One of the best economies in Africa that is growing at 8.9% rate is Botswana in Africa. What does Botswana has that is working for Africa? Botswana has one of the best institutions that guarantee a free elections, one of the free institutions that guarantee is checked as we speak. The former president of Botswana had been indicted for money laundering while he was the president. What we are talking about is the lack of institutions that is going to guarantee that even if we go to the IMF and borrow money, there will be checks and balances in place that is going to make sure that that money goes into an economic investment that's going to grow the economy of the country of Africa. In 1975 and 1974, Cameroon United Arab Emirates, South Korea, I think India, I don't remember if India was among them. These countries were rated at the same level according to United Nations Development Index. And while these countries were going ahead, going ahead and putting in place, and again, the, all these countries were colonized. Don't get, let's be factual here. These countries were all colonized. When these countries gained their independence and were putting in place institutions that are going to guarantee an economy and go. The rest of Africa was fighting tribal wars, who were doing, you know, importing weapons in order to maintain presidents in power, who were doing all these things. Gently, we are not saying that the West does not have a role to play in the problem of Africa. But what we are saying, as I keep saying, is that we have allowed ourselves to be manipulated by the West for their own interest. South Korea was colonized. India was colonized. The Philippines were colonized. All these other countries were all colonized. Let's get this right. But they have gained their independence and they have decided to build their economy, build their countries, and make sure that these foreign influences do not come in to wreak havoc on their economy. But on the contrary, in Africa, we are singing praises. You know, Five Collins already mentioned it there. We have young people with brains who are going through towns and chanting songs to 90 year old people who are about to go to the grave and say let them be their president will you blame the west for that kind of a thing of course not let me be realistic you're not going to blame them because we have not come to that we realize what our priorities are yes the west has its place they have done what they are doing we thank god for you know uh, media like this one with that's bringing african consciousness to its own. and people are fighting to maintain what uh, what they need in order to grow the economy but again, we should be wary. Because if you look at even those powers, somebody mentioned Thomas Sankara. Who saw Thomas Sankara? Let's compare another African. We talk about African, you know, CFA that all of us are fighting that it should be eliminated. We see the West African uh, uh, ECOWAS started something. And then they came out with the monetary policy and they were about to implement it. Who came in and destroyed it? Good war with the influence of France. They destroy the whole policy. So, gentlemen, let me be realistic. It is true that the West has its place to manipulate us. But we allow ourselves to be manipulated as if we do not have brains. We are smart enough. We are capable enough. We are able to do this. But until we have that political consciousness of what it takes to withstand the Octagorian and the Olukaji of the West, we will be in this position until we leave our own interest. Because as I mentioned before, if you look at corruption all over Africa, the amount of money that one person is going to embezzle in the country of Cameroon, for example, because you guys are there, one person can embezzle 26.67 billion francs CFA. That is wickedness. That is what we call being our own problem. How could the government in place allow this, not having checks, in, checks and balances in place, allow one single individual one single individual uh, to corrupt to, to invest that amount of money. But in countries that have succeeded, Botswana as an example, if you look at the amount of money that, you know, the former president of Botswana is being persecuted, persecuted for, 
It's like peanuts compared to what is being stolen in Nigeria and Cameroon and all these other countries. That tells you that this economy that works. It is not how much you steal, but the fact that you have found. And when you have those checks and balances in this economy, and you have an economy that works, I am telling you, Africa is going to be. I don't see any competition because the world is even afraid of the, so, uh, of the African free trade uh, uh, zone that has just been created because that's a powerful tool. But how are we going to come and acclimate that when we have this country fight? Wars and this one afraid that because of the war in this country is going to be exported in this other country and they're you know which strength themselves and they don't want to call impact. So all the four countries are signed that by out of 54. Some are afraid of what is going to be, and then we have Cote d'Ivoire there and uh Watara playing the game uh, playing the games of France. We have to realize that Africa is giving the leeway to the Western power. Five colleagues just mentioned about the 55 billion that Joe Biden just signed. Nobody has had the question. What sector is it going to be invented into? What did they present that this money is going to be distributed is going to be doing? Nobody has already come out with platform. So what we know is that when this money is going to be given, we're going to have here another uh, uh, Joe Biden gate, as we've seen, COVID gate, Glencoe gate, this one gate, Olembe gate, whatsoever gate. That is the problem that we are having, gentlemen. We need to realize this. I am not saying that the West does not have a role play in the problems in Africa. No, we know what's going on. If India could withstand West, we could stand them. If South Korea could withstand the West, we could withstand them. If the Philippines could withstand the West, we could withstand them. If Tanzania with Mugufuli could withstand the West, we could withstand them. If Rwanda and Kagame could withstand France and change even the, 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 the language of the country from France from French to English, we could do the same in the rest of Africa. They are living examples in Africa that shows that we can succeed. That's the point I'm making. We can succeed. Yes, the West has done its worst, but we can win ourselves from them and become independent economically because political independence without economic independence, you are not independent. As long as we still allow them to dictate the terms of every loan that we get, it's a fact measure about loan there. But as I mentioned from the beginning, Africa is in a trap. When you go to the World Bank, the World Bank is not going to tell you that we're not going to salvage the economy. When Ghana went there, they look at the situation. When it comes to countries, there's a difference between a country borrowing and an individual borrowing. When an individual borrowing, you're going to talk about collateral strategy, you're going to talk about capability to pay back. But when a country is borrowing, the metrics that they look about are actually different. Every country has the capability to pay its debts because they collect taxes. Individuals don't collect taxes. They collect bonds. Individuals don't collect bonds. They collect treasury bonds. Individuals don't collect that. So every country has the means to pay, but at what rate? At what rate? That is the question we should be asking ourselves. The World Bank will give. The IMF will give. But they will give at those killing rates that I just talked about because Africa is considered as a security risk. Africa is considered at the risk of being a uh, defaultment risk. Africa is considered as a risk of corruption, the money being embezzled. Africa is considered as a security risk. So many issues that are bringing down the credit rating of Africa and therefore we're in this debt spiral. The next one that five come Coordination, which is true, I give it to him. China. China is now going into these predatory loans to Africa. And Africa is running away from a World Bank into the hands of China. It's like from frying pan to fire. And what we know that China does, I have to say it here very emphatically. When China is implementing any project in Africa, what they do is this they bring about every single thing, even the material that they will use, the food that they will eat, the hammer they will use, the rock that they will use. Everything comes from China, which means the investment that is being conducted in Africa, who benefits? It is China and not Africa. And the workers themselves are Chinese. I was actually when I came to one recent, I saw Chinese frying puff puff in Africa. Puff puff. That's to tell how much they have gone to ravage the economy of Africa. So until we realize, gentlemen, that we need to take back the economy and the perception of Africa, we will be talking about this in a long time to come. Are we able to do it? Yes, we can. Rwanda has done it. Botswana has done it. Some other countries, Kenya is trying to put itself of this one and become, you know, uh, cash flow positive. Some other countries are doing it. We will get there somehow. But until we put these structures, checks and balances in place to make sure that whatever we borrow is going to the right sources, I think we'll be talking about this for a long time. But I hope not. I hope not. Major a researcher with Flix University. We will uh, be closing today's program. And uh, Mr. Zium Emmanuel, we just want to end briefly. 
in finding out that how we cannot avoid the news crumble for Africa, it's evident that we cannot avoid it. But how can we take advantage of this news crumble? What can we do collectively as a continent? Is there a way out? Yes, <coughs> collectively is a way out. You know, this popular say that united we stand, divided we fall. Mm -hmm. The for Africa to successfully tackle her problem, they need they don't need to go again in this first round. I think there is a need, an urgent need, for collective effort. If they have to resist the West, they have to resist the West collectively. Let me just give you an example. You see Colonel Asimi Goita fighting France mm -hmm. alone with his citizens. All the, ca all and, the casualties, West African yeah, bloc, was, all the casualties, he's bearing, he's bearing them alone. Whereas, in a collective effort, every country in Africa would have been given its contribution to make sure that they completely eradicate France. Hmm. By so doing, when you help a brother, you are helping yourself indirectly. That's what people fail to understand. By helping Mali, just take for example that Cameroon sent into her Mali. Cameroon would have indirectly be helping herself because that would be an, another message to France that we don't, we do, we do not also need to. Mm. But you see what is happening uh, that allow the fight to be a Malian fight, a Malian fight, and that's why it is dragging for too long. So I think collectively. And one thing again, I think African population need to open their eyes. All these old dictators who have nothing useful to offer to the population need to be out of the way. Okay. The first urgent thing is that our old ignorant dictators who are leaders should be out of the way. They are the ones blocking Africa's destiny. All right. Mr. Fivis, is there something we can do at this point in time to take advantage of this new scramble? France is at the door, United States is there, China is there, Russia is at the corner. Who do we turn to? Uh, we will, I think the only way out on my part is for the African elites who are in the diaspora to unite, like the man of the elite university, they form a common block and then they empower us who have taken the risk not to, to follow them over there. What do I say so? If these elites mean business for the African continent, they group themselves and come back forcefully for investment on the African continent, on private businesses that will lead to job creation and get youth involved and empower them financially. If they do so, Anytime it comes to elections, the youth will not be vulnerable to take 2,000 francs and go to the street singing, Bobby, I stay in power for long. The youth will reject those 1,000, reject those issues of going to take two bottles of beer to support a dictator, and by so doing, they will form a united force to unseat the president in any way possible. I repeat, in any way possible. If these grammars from the elites on the African continent staying and enjoying themselves with good jobs over there does not get a transfer directly on the african continent because we need african bourgeoisies now that is reality if you get african bourgeoisies transferred by economic principles from the west to the african continent and they stabilize for two three years i would tell you in less than no time it will take another generation of africans to fit put in money even in elections to unseat dictators, even if it means using whatever means, they will be toppled in less than no time. Okay. If we forget that, and people stay in abroad, and are giving us lessons on grammar, when the youth on the streets in Bepanda is hungry, and he needs that change, but the parliamentarian will come there and give him 2,000 francs, where he has not eaten since morning. He thinks, I say, oh, le président, reste jusqu'à jusqu la mort. That is where we start having missing the dark tax. So those who have eyes, he has to listen. Mm -hmm. Listen very well because as you invest in the West, building your houses, buy your mansions in America, Switzerland, Germany, and say that's your home, you will not expect us to strive overnight 
If I tell them how Bagbo equally was to come back, Africa elites in Ivory Coast assisted even in Bagbo's case in the tribunal, in the Hague, and did other things that the bad guy don't want to say here for him to resurface. These African elites, if you want us to move, after researching and doing all that, get economic empowerment principle. If you don't know, get to be backstage. I will tell you what to do. Let's get to Bamenda, get to Betua, get to Ebolova. There are investments of economic activities from those in the West, block by block, coming back to Cameroon, what's the economic stabilizer with youths fully vibrant economically? The girl will be toppled in less than no time. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fibis. Uh, let's end with you, Mr. Elijah Noko. Briefly, uh, we understand that uh, the scramble for Africa is not going away anytime soon. And what attracts the West to Africa is uh, the richness of the continent. We have the resources. That's why uh, the West will not give up and they are there and uh, you said corruption and war is what is hindering uh, the progress of course uh, we're looking at possible solutions what do you think is a way out at this time can we avoid or can we take advantage of the recent scramble or the scramble which we we africa is of course facing at the moment briefly yes we can yes we can um just on a layman level if somebody comes to you with a contract right it is that I want to go into a contract with you. A comes and B comes and C comes. What you're going to sit on the table is look at the terms of what A is presenting. Look at the terms of what B is presenting. Look at the terms of what C is presenting. Based on your own objective, based on your own goal, based on what you want to achieve, you can either decide to go A or B or C. That's what Africa should be doing. Russia should be on the table. United States should be on the table. Europe should be in the table. Even France, that is a colonial power that we are fighting, should be on the table. If they come up with an economic, I mean, a, a parcel, a package for exploitation that meet the needs of what we want as Africans, of course we should go into partnership with them. Mogufui successfully did that. He successfully renegotiated almost every single contract that the country went into with all nine companies, bauxite, iron, Aluminium, uh, aluminium, uranium. He renegotiated all those contracts. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, a gentleman, you could go and look at the records. A man that transformed the country within four years. It's not rocket science. It's as simple as ABC. It takes political goodwill. We need people with that good faith political goodwill to do these things. And a uh, little one to my big brother, Fire Edis. Um, you know, the things that we do, we don't have to say that on TV. So, I take I take your bait, and um, if you know me personally, uh, let's not go into that. But again, the things we're doing recently, um, I, had a talk, I was presenting to the Russian government. I had a presentation that was chosen by the university. I had a presentation. I highlighted what Africa's need. Uh, I highlighted a couple of things, and there were eyeballs that were rolling on the floor. But I had to say it because that's what Africa stands for. So there are things that are being done in the background, and we continue to do that. But Africa needs to stand, even you know, just to corroborate like what Emmanuel said. Uh, and dealing with man, well, Africa needs to come together as one. If you have a cause that is fighting a uh, 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 goida fighting uh, the guy in, in, in Burkina, Burkina Faso, instead of coalescing around him to say, we know that you want to fix the problem of the country, it's a military junta, but we're going to give you time. Instead of imposing sanctions like uh, ECOWAS is doing with African Union, they should coalesce and see how they can help these people come out of their problems so that if we are united in saying no to neocolonialism, no to all this public leadership, no to all the people, the West is going to listen. But if we are divided and this and the, France is using uh, Ouattara to fight Mali, France is using this one to do this, then it becomes a problem. But again, can we do it? Yes, Africans can become the kingmaker and decide, let all these people come to the table. Joe Biden, you know, uh, uh, Russia and the rest, let them bring whatever they have. Let's sit down. Let's be a kingmaker. We have resources. We have the knife on the yam. Let's decide on who we want to work with. Let it not be somebody coming to imposing on us and we cover our eyes and go into contracts that are kind of completely decimated the economy of our countries and then we say we're going into negotiations. No, let's be the kingmakers. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Elijah Inoku, researcher with Phoenix University. Thanks for your argument this day on the program. Thank you, Ikoli, uh, to have been there all through this year, 2022. Thanks for your participation on programs on African Media. We very much appreciate your different contributions on different topics which we have been discussing here. Thanks for always being there.
Mr. Ndium Emmanuel, civil society advocate. Thank you for your time. Thank you for 2022. Thanks for always being there. We appreciate your contributions. Africans as well appreciate all, it's, of course, your contributions. It's always a pleasure. Yeah. Each time the, the need arises for us to talk Africa, yeah. we talk. We always say what we think is correct. Yeah. Those who are listening, if they can pick one or two things from it and implement, yeah. it is for the collective good of the whole of Africa. Exactly. What who sees building a continent that will be befitting for everybody is a crime. It is never a crime. Mm. It will never be a crime. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Fire, these journalists and political analysts, 2022 has been a great year. Thank you for always uh, accepting the invitation of Africa Media. We very much appreciate your contributions and your arguments. Africans as well are watching. Thank you. Thanks very much for uh, inviting me. I think I would be uh, very frequent now than before. Uh, like you said, 2022 has been a great year. It has been a great year for the fact that we are alive, but for the rest of the things, it has not been a great year. Okay. I must be honest with you. Mm. To see people mortgage our future for their selfish reasons, and to see that um, youths are being used as a tool mm. to keep those who are, who, has, who are currently living expired lives, I think it's a call for concern. But I think the main thing we have to do is we'll continue talking and let universities, let researchers, let all of us put an eye to educate the youths to know that a 2,000 fast they give you to go and support a dictator is punishment to you and your generations to come. All in all, greetings once more to the people of Gunoko Village as usual, mm -hmm. and um, all those who are getting us, like the Royal Majesty of Limbe, who is also uh, my very uh, good friend. But then, for all those who embezzled money on this African continent and the Kangaroo government, they will hear from us and right. from the ancestors in less than no time. Thank you. Thank you very much. The challenges uh, continue. The fight for Africa's dignity, preservation of Africa's sovereignty continues. Thank you, those watching. Thanks to have been there all through accompanying us uh, through 2022. See you in 2023. I will promise to bring you better content. And don't you forget that we love you so very much, and we want you to always stay with your Pan African television. Until then, Happy New Year. Bye-bye for 2022. It's been a great year. Thank you.